Hello again. I'm going to explore asynchronous stack traces in Node.js today. This is a topic that's been floating around for the past month, inspired by Google engineers who have been putting in some interesting work into V8 to give us some interesting support in Node.js. This is future work, so it, it works now behind a flag on certain versions of Node. You probably won't have access to it unless you're willing to jump through a few hoops. Uh, this will be coming, um, I assume, to Node 11, if not, then Node 12 in some form. So I'll quickly describe what it is that uh, we're looking at with asynchronous stack traces, just to give you some background. But I assume if you know Node.js, if you're using Node.js, then you've run into the problems that come with asynchronous stack traces and finding the root cause of your errors. Okay, so let's build a really quick callback based application just to demonstrate the problem with stack traces in Node. So just going to quickly un unveil a application that I wrote previously here. So I've got a few functions, each called by the number that they're called being called in. And so in each function, there's some asynchronous work going on. In this case, I'm using set timeout to simulate asynchronous work, but this could be next tick or it could be a call to an external function, an external service. It could be um, anything that involves crossing the asynchronous boundary. Let's use set timeout uh, in this function called one. We're going to use 100, uh, 100 milliseconds and then we're going to explicitly return a new error. So we'll create a new error object and return on the callback that was passed into that function. Uh, a second function which calls the first function, so this function is called 2, calling function 1, but it will call it after a set timeout of 200 milliseconds. And then a third function doing the same thing with 300 milliseconds. Uh, this is just, this is very arbitrary, we're just doing this to, to simulate asynchronous work. And then I'm going to call it, so call function 3, and then the callback that we, re we give it, we'll look for the error property and console log the error. And when you console log an error, it will print out a stack trace. It looks into the stack property on the error object, which is a custom V8 property, and will print out the stack trace. So I'll save that and let's run that. Now it waited. You saw that there was a, a amount of time that it waited. So there was asynchronous work going on and we get a stack trace for the original error. And this stack is generated at the time of error, or at least it captures the information of the stack at that time uh, that the error is occurred. The actual stack trace that it prints is generated at a later time, but it uses the information that is captured during that the execution on that frame. So what we see is a, a, a snapshot of the current stack of function calls as they existed within V8 at the moment the, the error was generated. And once you step outside of the asynchronous boundary, so when, when, V8, when V8 relinquishes control to Node and Node goes through its event loop process and then eventually comes back, uh, we've lost all of the frames that we were where we were at that moment and we don't have any more information. So as we can see from this stack trace, we have um, CB line number two. And then we have some internal Node.js things for timers, which are not interesting at all. Um, that's really all, the only information we have. So we can look back in our file and see, okay, line number two, uh, that's where the error occurred. Great. We know where the error occurred, but how did we get to the error? So if we had, say, an uncaught exception handler printing out errors, we'd find out where they occurred, but we wouldn't know the call stack leading up to it, which is generally the interesting part when you're trying to de debug an application. So stack traces in Node tend to be these detached frames that are difficult to link together. There are ways to build these what are called long stack traces where you can link them together, but they involve using packages from NPM that add significant amounts of overhead to your application. You certainly wouldn't want to run them in, in production. I know some people like to do these things in development, but um, it's not ideal. This is one of the biggest problems with asynchronous programming, really. So let's move on to a promises slash async await version of this same uh, issue. And we'll see that it's essentially the same problem. Okay, to start off with, we're going to create an asynchronous function that will let us call set timeout using await. So that's all that is. We're going to call the function pause, and it will do a set timeout for the amount of time that you've asked to do. That's so, so we can just use await pause. So function one, same thing. We're going to pause for 100 milliseconds. Then we are going to throw an error. So this is simulating the same kind of thing where we pass a callback in, wait 100 milliseconds and then return an error. So same kind of thing. We're going to do a second one where we wait 200 milliseconds. And then a third one 
where we await 300. And we're going to add to this one, we're going to add fourth. So we've got these multiple layers of indirection happening here. We've got these different frames happening. There's actually a bunch of frames here because we've got the additional pause frames involved in the promise. And there's even more going on that we'll talk about in a minute. Finally, I'm going to capture the time so that we can just make sure that it's running how long we, we said it would. We're going to run four and then we're going to catch the error and console log the error, same as before. And uh, we'll do it finally just to, to print the time. So let's run that one. Okay, so same problem. We, we know where the problem with the error occurred. So it, it was at line seven. We don't get the additional internal node stuff here because V8 is running this. It's not running on the node timers. It's not running on the node um, next tick queue even. This is all happening within V8. So we get a very pure stack trace here, but it's just as useless. So line number seven, we can see the error code there, but we don't know what was leading up to it. So this is a problem. It's always been a problem in Node. And what can we do about it? So let's look at this Google document that has been shared by Benedict Muir and Yang Yuo from the V8 team, discussing how we can achieve zero cost asynchronous stack traces within V8. The objective here is to do it in a way that doesn't add overhead to your application. So zero cost is the objective, which sounds quite tricky. But the nice fact is we have this asynchronous primitive now in JavaScript, the promise, which has a lot of internal metadata. V8 actually stores us the forward and backward linkages between promise chains. So they can actually refer to frames as they execute forward and backward. So if an error occurs, they already have information to how things connect. Now, there's some edge cases that they identify in this document about uh, for where this doesn't actually work because, unfortunately, async await has some special cases about how it uses promise resolution. So I think I think it's we have three promises involved in async await, and unfortunately, there's an additional frame there that makes it difficult to collect information. They discuss the problem and then refer to a solution, which is a proposed TC39 change. Um, that is linked to as well. So this is this was proposed earlier this year and it's still working its way through the TC39 process. And it's to reduce the number of ticks involved in a prom in an async await uh, execution from three down to two. Uh, and this provides some solutions for get achieving zero cost async stack traces in the majority of cases where you use async await. So this proposal is, uh, it, it depends on that TC39 proposal getting in. If we assume that it gets in, then we should we should get some interesting tools out of V8 that are essentially zero cost. Be interesting to see if they are genuinely zero cost during runtime, but I would assume so. There's, there's, there's a lot of detail in here about how the different approaches could work and how the internals work. I'd, I'd encourage you to have a look if you're interested. But uh, let's let's have a look at what they've actually done. So as of V8 7.1, which is with Chrome 71, they have implemented this mechanism behind a flag, async stack traces. So if you run with the flag async stack traces, it will turn on this additional flag, which is harmony or weight optimization. And what that does is implements this TC39 proposal to change the way that async await works. Now, the, the additional advantage of this proposal is that the benchmarks are showing that there is a speed improvement uh, when executing async await, which is, is pretty sweet as well. So you turn this, this flag on, it will turn on that additional feature. So that's the main reason this is hiding behind a flag at the moment, because this is not through TC39, so it's, it's non-standard way of executing async await. So that's V8 7.1. Unfortunately, Node is only up to V8 7.0 because that's the current stable version of V8. If we look at the Chromium calendar, and you can find this on the chromium.org site, you can actually see when things are due to be uh, released. So if we scroll down to estimated stable dates, these are only estimated, but they've been pretty pretty uh, close. We can see we're on um, 7.0 or Chrome version 70 at the moment. 71 is estimated to go stable on December the 4th. So that's when, that's when we'll expect to see work begin in earnest, getting it merged into Node, and then possibly out into Node 11, if we can make it so that it doesn't break anything by doing the merge. So currently we don't have any Node, and it's not even in the master branch because it's not stable. That's just not how it's done in Node. But Node does ship some nightlies with 
more recent versions of V8. So let's have a look at the node download directory. So if you go to node.js.org slash download, you'll see a bunch of directories here where you can pick up some different builds. There's this special directory called V8 Canary. This is generated automatically by the node CI infrastructure. What happens is every night, the CI system will check out node, the node master. It will check out the V8 repository and then look at the, the LKGR branch, which stands for last known good release, and it will try and smush them together. And if they successfully compile, uh, then it will release a new version for uh, whatever whatever platforms they compile on. So you can actually try current node with a last known good release of uh, V8. And by release, that just means last known good compilable version, not actually a stable version, but it's something that might be in Canary, for instance. So if we look at index.json here, we can see the latest one, which was the 8th of um, November, has V8 version 7.2, which is even better than what we want. So let's look at the, the, v11, the V12 downloads, and we can see that that latest version there has got Linux, it's got Windows, Mac OS, it's got most things there. So this was a pretty successful build. So if you wanted to, you certainly shouldn't use this in production because this is not even uh, very well uh, tested. It is an automatic munging of source code. That's all this is. So caveat emptor. So I've downloaded the, the version here that I can use. I can run node uh, v8 canary and bin node process.versions and I can see here that I've got v8 7.2 which is nifty. So node, so not that one, I need to go to dash dash v8 options, pipe that to less because there's a lot of them. You search for async and where is it? Nope, there we are. Async stack traces is a new flag that we can use to run with node. So we can now run our node binary, pass it the async stack traces flag, give it our async.js, which had our async await in it. And there we go. We have a new stack trace here. This is the original one. The original error gave us this. So if we ran it with plain node, we, we have just that. The new one has these new frames. So, and they're telling us they're async frames. So we've got two, three, and four, and it gives us the line numbers for them as well. So we can see from the calling function 22 all the way up to line seven, the asynchronous frames. This is coming soon to Node. It will, re it will require the landing of that TC39 proposal. When that happens, this will probably be unflagged and we will get it for good. Unfortunately, this is not going to work with callback code. You will get the same stack traces as before. And that's because we're not using promises, internal V8 promises, uh, because they have, as I said, they have all this metadata data associated with them. And that will go the same for non-native promises. If you're using promises that come out of a user land library, uh, even though they might work with async await, they are unlikely to work with this. That may change in the future as, they, uh, as V8 does some additional things with them. But for now, native promises will give you and using the async stack traces flag will give you this. Let's look at one way you could do this today with node, whatever version you happen to have. I've got 11.1 .1 here. So I'm gonna edit my async file and get rid of the catch. So I'll just comment that out. So this is gonna throw, just it's, it's an un, uncaught rejection really. So if, for instance, if I run it, I should get an, a warning. So there's an unhandled promise rejection. Um, happening there. But if I run it with the inspect break, inspect brook flag, I'm going to give it an address to listen on because I'm running across two computers here. But inspect brace break without a, a, an argument would be fine. So run it with async. This is going to start the internal node inspector protocol and it's going to break my application as soon as, it, as it's finished parsing. So it's not going to go straight into execution until I unpause it in inspector. So let's start that. We'll see some information there. Go back to our Chromium window here, and we can see that it's already picked up this. If I open a dedicated DevTools for Node, I could, I could click either of these, but let's open the dedicated window here. There's my application. 
it has paused execution on this line here. That's the first line to execute. This is all just parsed. Up here, we have this little don't pause on exceptions. If you click on that to make it go blue, you can also pause on uh, court ex exceptions. You can basically pause on all sorts of things that get um, thrown around here. So we can start execution now that we're in there. And a second later, it has caught the error. Now up here, you'll notice that it has actually caught out our call stack across the async await frames. So this is what, like what we were seeing on the console before, but this is in the Spectre and this will work today. This is not something that you would want to do in production, of course. And it's actually at its high cost because this adds additional layers within your code to do this capturing. Uh, perhaps this will become zero cost as well for uh, dev tools, but for now, this is an expensive thing that you certainly wouldn't want to do in, in production. But the nice thing is here, we can navigate across the different frames as they're called and see where the original call site is. So that's how you could do it today if you wanted to debug, but uh, it's certainly not as elegant as having it on the command line. So that's how you can do asynchronous stack traces in Node.js. You can do it with the DevTools Inspector, uh, or you can wait until we get at least V8 7.1 shipped with Node, then use the special flag, which is probably not advised until TC39 ratifies it in JavaScript. But they're coming soon. And soon, if you use async await, um, your code will start to look much more interesting uh, when you're looking at stack traces. So that's all I have for you today.